If you're sitting down or laying in bed as you watch this video, I challenge you to get up and get moving. Today, I'll be talking about movement and specifically how not moving enough can change our bodies on a biological level. I'll also talk about how much movement you need to do to counteract too much sitting. And I'll answer the question, is sitting really the new smoking? But first, let's talk about how sitting changes your body on a cellular level. When you're in the sitting position, your skeletal muscles are not doing much contracting. That's because sitting is easy. Your muscles don't have to do a whole lot of work. You can just plop down on the couch. It feels great. They're not doing anything. It's, it's a simple task. Sitting in and of itself is not bad. The problem arises when you let Netflix autoplay episode after episode of whatever one hour drama you're currently wrapped up in. And you end up in the same position for hours. After the second episode, your body starts to produce less of the enzyme lipoprotein lipase or LPL. LPL is important for clearing out fat from your bloodstream. Without enough LPL, you end up with high cholesterol and high triglycerides. Less LPL is also associated with less HDL, AKA your good cholesterol and higher blood sugar. Here's a summary of all of the negative outcomes that have been linked to sitting for two or more hours at a time on a regular basis. Have you gotten up yet? If you work a job where you have to sit at a desk all day, then watching back-to-back -back episodes of your favorite show isn't going to be your only issue. You also have to account for the hours that you're sitting at work too. If you have to commute as well, then that adds even more hours to your daily sitting tally. If you think about it, it's not hard to spend two hours back-to-back -back just sitting. It's kind of a fact of modern life for a lot of us. In terms of the magnitude of the effect, the risk for developing type 2 diabetes in people who sit for hours and hours at a time is doubled, while the risk for developing heart disease, cancer, or some other ailment falls between 10 and 20%. Let's talk more about how sitting increases your risk for type 2 diabetes. Sitting is bad for blood sugar control, mainly because it affects the way that your body metabolizes carbohydrates or carbs. Let's do a quick sidebar on carbs. Carbs are basically long chains of sugar molecules. Bread, cookies, fruit, potatoes, juice, these are all carbs. When we digest carbs, they get converted into sugar. Now, for our bodies to use that sugar, that sugar must first enter our cells. Sugar doesn't just waltz into our cells though. It needs a special key and a special door. Insulin acts as a key to unlock the door to the cell. As for the door itself, that is called a glucose transporter. Our bodies get prompted to make more doors to the cells or glucose transporters when we move. Exercise, even at low intensity, has been shown to dramatically increase the content of GLUT4 in muscle. So basically, movement or exercise helps our bodies to keep blood sugar levels stable. The last side effect that I want to talk about is bone health. Yes, sitting is bad for your bones. Sedentary behavior is linked to lower bone mineral density. This is a kind of use it or lose it situation. Studies on people who spend long periods of time in space and people confined to the bed by spinal cord injuries tell us that when we are not bearing weight on our bones regularly, they respond by getting less dense. More bone gets resorbed or broken down, which can lead to an increased risk of osteoporosis. Now I know somebody out there is wondering, okay, yes, sitting is bad. But what if I work out several days a week, but I still have a job where I have to sit for most of the day? Do I still need to worry about all these consequences? You are what researchers would call an active couch potato. And the unfortunate answer is that Yes, you most likely will still need to be worried about the effects of sitting. The important thing to remember is that sitting is distinct from exercising. They're not simply two activities that oppose each other. They're two distinct things that you want to make sure that you're doing enough of and not doing too much of. A good way to think about this is the way you think about food, right? So there are certain things you want to make sure you're eating plenty of in your diet and other things that you're not having too much of. So exercise is like eating vegetables. You're exercising, you're eating vegetables, that is good for your health. But if you're also eating candy every time you have a salad, you're kind of undoing some of that work. So that's what being sedentary all day can do to you if you're exercising, but then spending most of your day seated. And we know all of this thanks to this study. Here, they studied over 4,000 men and women who reported exercising for at least two and a half hours per week and found that the people who sat the longest in front of the TV were most likely to also 
also have a higher waist circumference, high blood pressure, and worse blood sugar control. I will say that this association was correlational and not causative because it wasn't a randomized control trial. But there's still the question, is there an amount of exercise that you could achieve such that the effects of sitting are completely canceled out? Somebody did study that. To counteract the effects of sitting too much on your health, you would need to do 60 to 75 minutes, that's an hour or more, of moderate to vigorous exercise every day. It can be tough to meet the minimum requirement for exercise. So for people to aim to do an hour plus of moderate to vigorous activity every single day, it's not impossible. I'm sure that there are people out here who are doing it, but it might not be feasible for most people. What's more is that even if you are able to do that, work out intensely for an hour or more every single day, if you spend five or more hours sitting in front of the TV, then you still are at a higher risk of dying. Worth it? up to you to decide. That really depends on your goals. All right, now there is one more question I wanna ask before I end this video, and that question is, is sitting really the new smoking? Many years ago, there were a number of headlines saying that sitting is the new smoking, implying that sitting for long hours was as bad as taking a drag. I want to make it clear that this is not true. While sitting for long hours day after day is bad for your health, smoking is much worse. This paper compares the data on health outcomes related to both smoking and too much sitting and shows that the two are clearly very different in terms of the harmful outcomes that they're likely to produce. Let's do a comparison. Sitting for too long has been shown to increase your risk of dying sooner by 25%. Smoking is also associated with a shortened lifespan, but the risk is much higher, 180%. Smoking causes far more deaths overall when compared to sitting. Smoking kills people by causing lung cancer, but what you may not know is that smoking also increases your risk for heart failure. The the only outcome for which sitting is worse is the risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Okay, so now let's talk solutions. We know that sitting for long periods of time is bad. What do we do about it? If you think I'm going to say to just exercise, you're wrong. I'm not going to say that because the key here, like I said earlier, is to treat sitting for long periods of time as distinct from exercise. So the thing you want to focus on is not sitting for hours and hours on end uninterrupted. My main solution for this is don't be afraid to be weird. If your job requires you to be seated all day, get up every one or two hours or even every 30 minutes if you can and try to work while standing or take a walk or do some squats. When you're watching TV, take breaks in between episodes and get up and do something. Make it fun. You can compete to see who can do the most jumping jacks or who can do the most push-ups if you live with family or roommates. You can clean or just dance and be free. Research shows that just five to 10 minute bites of exercise can have a significant impact on your health. Yes, just five to 10 minutes of this or this or this can be life-changing. This number comes from this research paper where the scientists reported that moderate to vigorous activity in small chunks may not give you big biceps, but can still protect against early death. Benefits of bite-sized workouts include improved cardiorespiratory fitness, higher levels of good cholesterol and lower levels of bad cholesterol and triglycerides, healthier weight, improved blood pressure, better blood sugar levels, reduced inflammation as measured by C-reactive protein or CRP, and a longer life. So all all of those things that you have probably considered doing or are already doing to get more active throughout the day, like taking the stairs or choosing to park in a space that's far from the grocery store entrance or get a standing desk, all of those things are actually worthwhile. And that's good news, right? That you don't need to run a marathon every day. You don't even need to do 30 straight minutes of exercise every day to see some benefit on your health. You can do your workouts in little chunks by interrupting sitting for long periods of time with some movements. And something tells me, and this is not based on any research, this is just my own impression here, that that can contribute to more happiness as well. Because just moving, taking a break to step away from things can help to lift your spirits as well. And that brings me to the end of today's video. Take care.